but uh, this just sounds like a horrible job, frankly. It's a 300% raise, and if you don't take it, you're fired. Norm is offered a bad job, but an enormous salary increase. My name's Matt Rosu. I'm an economist at Susquehanna University. I'm also dean of the Sigmund Weiss School of Business here. And this is part of a series where we're examining the economic lessons from Cheers. Let's watch a little bit more of a clip spliced together where we go through and see what Norm gets to do, gets to do with his new job. We'll go to that right now. Peterson, we've been making some organizational changes in the company and starting tomorrow, we want you to be our corporate killer. Guy who fires people? That's right. I'm honored, sir. <laughs> But uh, this, this just sounds like a horrible job, frankly. It's a 300% raise, and if you don't take it, you're fired. <laughs> Sir, I will have you know that I cannot be bought, and I cannot be threatened. But you put the two together, and I'm your man. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Lucky, who is your young friend over there? Well, it's my first assignment, Cliffy. I was supposed to fire that guy first thing in the morning. I haven't been able to do it yet. You mean you've been with a guy all day and you haven't can? Such a sweet young kid. I just can't tear his heart out. I don't know. I've been struggling with it all day, Sammy. I was going to tell him at lunch, you know, but we we're enjoying ourselves so much. Uh -huh. It just seemed gauche. So I thought I'd take him to a movie, you know, and try to get him relaxed a bit. And you couldn't tell him there on? No. But I came awfully close at the ball game. <laughs> Not at all. Mr. Peterson. Ever since I could remember, I dreamed of being an accountant. From the age of six, I did odd jobs so I could put myself through college. Now that I have it, I feel like I've got the world at my feet. I just put a down payment on a house. Now, maybe it was a little more than we wanted to spend, but escrow closed today, so there's no turning back now. <laughs> Besides, with my wife pregnant, we're going to need the room. You're... you're... Well, you know, uh, my, my wife and I are trying to have a baby, actually. Hey, that's great. Our kids are going to play together at the company picnic. I don't think so, Billy. <laughs> Why not? Because you're fired. I'm fired. <laughs> yeah, it's not your fault. Your history, Billy. It's a damn company. They're <laughs> cutting back all over the place. You're a good accountant. I'm... <laughs> Oh, sorry. Latest victim. Oh. <laughs> It'll be all right. I'll find another job someday. You promise? Huh? Huh? I promise. Now buck up. <laughs> That man is a prince. <laughs> Norm is sleeping like a baby. Yeah, a baby with a license to kill. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> you okay? Hey. You okay? Wake up. Okay, really fun clip. Um, watching this, wow, it's, it's amazing how well I think Cheers holds up. So Norm is offered a truly terrible job, and he says, you know, we hear 300% pay increase, which is, of course, three times salary. That's enormous and probably a little bit unrealistic for a job that is undesirable. And this gives us a good opportunity to talk about what are called compensating wage differentials. A compensating wage differential is an increase in wages that somebody receives for a job that is either more dangerous, less, uh, less pleasurable, less fulfilling, basically an increase in wages because of taking a worse job. And it's exactly what we see here. So Norm's asked to be the corporate killer to fire people. and. <sighs> does not seem like a great job to me. I'm guessing most people would not think it's a great job. There was actually a whole movie made about this. Uh, I believe it's up in the air. We'll put a link in the description. That was a good movie. George Clooney um, 
you know was uh, was in that movie. So, th- but certainly not a desirable job. And for somebody to take a job like that, where you are literally telling people day in and day out that you're being fired, you would think that that person should be paid an increase over a sim- a job that would require similar abilities, but is you know not kind of issuing devastating news, essentially. So why are there compensating wage differentials for these types of jobs? And this, it all comes down to basic supply and demand. Would you like to have a job as a corporate killer or a job with, say, a higher probability of death? I would assume the answers to these are no, all else equal. Well, because of that, and because most people are like you and me, and that does not sound too appealing, the supply of people who want to do these particular jobs is lower. Anytime the supply is lower, the equilibrium price is higher. So lower supply, we see a higher price, and here the price is the wage. So those that are least desirable or most dangerous should see pretty significant wage premiums over other similar jobs. Now, here we hear a 300% pay increase. That's probably not quite realistic. I, I would not expect that to be the actual wage increase we would see with this particular job. On the flip side, in this exact same episode, we actually hear of compensating wage differentials in reverse. Let's check out the short clip. Afternoon, Sam. And how are we today? We're fine, Walt. How you doing? Well, it hasn't been an easy day, but any day I carry the U.S. mail, I count myself a lucky and useful human being. (laughs) Okay, so the mail carrier. What a fantastic line, right? Uh, Views it as just, it's an honor and a privilege, and he's a, a lucky human being to be able to deliver mail for the U.S. Postal Service. Well, I'm not certain that that's the universal thought of those who deliver mail. Uh, my father was uh, had a career as a mail carrier before um, actually pivoting to a career in real estate now. Uh, you know, certainly appreciated the job, but I, I never, um, I certainly never heard him utter those exact words that uh, it's an honor and privilege to be alive every day I get to carry the U.S. mail. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if, so people view that, though, you're willing to accept a lower payment Right, because you know it's so desirable. When a job is super desirable, the supply of people who would be willing to do it increases. When the supply increases, the price will decrease for those types of jobs. So, what are jobs where we might see that? Um, one, one is actually teaching and college professors. Um, te- teaching is viewed as a rewarding, you know, has non-monetary or non-pecuniary benefits that are rewarding out because, you know, you're educating the future leaders of America. And because of that, you would expect for people with similar kind of training skill levels, uh, there could be slightly lower wages offered because the supply of people who want to do that is a little bit higher. You could expect that both at the perhaps the K-12 level and even the college professor level, um, college professor salaries, the given the individuals have gone through and gotten a PhD, you know, for often it's four plus years of schooling beyond a bachelor's degree. Um, the wages are, are lower if you're in academia than one, if you're not in academia in general. And two, compared to, to say, um, well, somebody who's going to get like a medical doctorate, for example, like being a medical doctor, you know, which is schooling. I mean, there's a residency added on, but given the amount of, of schooling, uh, the salaries are, are going to be a little bit lower. Why? It's the same thing. It's, um, boy, teaching, I, I've always, I thought, um, I'm in the role of dean, I don't do quite as much teaching, uh, although I am doing it uh, this, this semester, I get to do this, uh, get to teach a class again. But it's, it's incredible. Love, just what an amazing job to, for me to be able to teach economics to people between this age range as they're figuring out life and uh, ready to launch into a career. It's stunningly rewarding. And a lot of people think the same. And because of that, of course, the supply is a little bit higher. Um, so the, it does work in reverse. If a job is incredibly appealing, 
uh, you would expect a higher supply, lower wages. Norm, the corporate killer, firing people, uh, it needs to have a real high wage to induce. Our mail carrier, of course, those are set, but he didn't need as high of a wage because it was an honor and a privilege to deliver the U.S. mail. Uh, once again, my name's Matt Rosu. This is part of a series where we're looking at economic lessons from Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this. Please click like and subscribe if you did, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.